أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم إن شاء الله today we'll touch upon the themes from chapter 15 سورة الحجر the rocky tract uh, الحجر is the place where a place in Arabia that Thamud the people of Prophet Saleh used to live. Um, so Surat al-Hijr was revealed in Mecca at the time when persecution of the Muslims was very intense, kind of like Surat Hud, the same background as Surat Hud. Uh, so Islam was being ridiculed. It was kind of looked down upon with suspicion. Uh, they were going after the Muslims, kind of like today's world, you know. You know, they call Muslims terrorists. They run, you know, they try to attack them. They try to abuse them. Same same type of environment. So Allah Taala revealed the surah, Surah Al-Hijr, to give the believers an important message. And that message is the religion of Islam is protected. Allah will protect it. He is the protector and not nobody else. So the message of Islam is protected. So focus as believers, focus on worship and doing your duties towards Allah and calling others to his faith. So spread faith and don't be impressed with the strength and power that the unbelievers have because it's fleeting. And do not weaken or lower yourself in front of them because you are in divine protection. A believer is always in the protection of Allah. The non-believer may temporarily have the upper hand, but eventually they will, you know, because they don't have the divine protection. So this is the main message of, of the surah. And inshallah, we'll, we'll see how the verses support that theme. So right from the beginning, the beginning of the surah, that uh, the surah begins with, Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitabi wa Qur'ani Mubin. Alif Lam Ra, these are the verses of the book and a clear Qur'an. Rubba ma yawaddu al-lazina kafaru law kanu muslimin, dharhum yakkulu wa yitamatta'u wa yulhihum al-amalu fasawfa ya'lamun. Perhaps those who disbelieve will wish that they had been Muslims. Let them eat and enjoy themselves and be diverted by false hope, for they are going to know. So right from the beginning of the surah, Allah is telling us, do not worry about non-believers. They, they're in temporary enjoyment. Their end is, is terrible. So the Quran and Islam are preserved from any harm because Allah guaranteed, guaranteed the preservation of the faith, as we'll see in some of the, uh, some of the other surahs. And the other theme is, you know, ignore the taunting of the unbelievers. Don't, you know, just, you know, people, there are other verses in the Quran that says you're going you're gonna to hear a lot of abuse from non-believers. So just, just ignore them. Ignore them. In verse 6 and 7, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرُ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ And they say, O oh, you upon whom the message has been sent down, indeed you are mad. They were describing the Prophet as you're crazy. What, are, what, what is this? nonsense that you're bring you know you know coming to us with i mean they're just making fun of the prophet and taunting him why do you not bring us the angels if you should be among the truthful you know bring al qiyamah bring the end of time let the sky fall upon us i mean these are typical taunts you know, that, that non-believers will say, I mean, they, they challenge, they go in and, and challenge, you know, believers with things like that. Uh, so, I mean, Allah is saying, don't, you just ignore their taunting. Protection and preservation is repeated. The al-hafid from hafid, you know, the hafid, which is preservation and protection, that verb repeats in, in many verses of this, of this surah. And it stresses that there is no protector except Allah. He is the only protector. If you want protection, you go to Allah. You don't go to anyone else. Your money will not protect you. Your power will not protect you. Your family will not protect you. 
Nothing will protect you except Allah. So this, you know, Allah wants us to focus. You know, once you know that Allah is the protector, then focus on your mission. Your mission, our reason why we exist in this world is to believe in Allah, to know him and to do good. And part of that doing good is calling others to, you know, to, to Islam and spreading that, you know, spreading the faith. So the many verses show us different ways that Allah's protection manifests itself. So the first of, you know, first one is the Quran is preserved. Verse 9, Indeed, it is we who sent down the Quran, and indeed we will be its guardian. Don't worry about it. Quran is preserved by Allah. Don't worry. It's not our job to preserve it. Allah has, has guaranteed that he will be the guardian and the preserver of the faith. Another thing, the heavens are protected. In verse 16 through 18, وَلَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا لِلنَّاظِرِينَ We, you know, put, and we have placed within the heaven great stars and have beautified it for the observer. وَحَفِظْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And we have protected it from every devil expelled from the mercy of Allah. So even, the, you know, the heavens are protected. Earth and provisions are also protected. I mean, these are all matters of importance to human beings. Well, in verse 19 and 20, وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَدْنَاهَا وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْزُونَ And the earth we have spread it and cast therein firmly set mountains and caused to grow therein something of every well-balanced thing. The mountains preserve the stability of the rotation of the earth. So the earth is preserved. وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشَ وَمَنْ لَسْتُمْ لَهُ بِرَازِقِينَ And we have made for you therein means of living and for those for whom you are not providers. The provisions are from Allah. So don't worry. He, he will create provisions for you on this earth. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدْرٍ مَعْلُومٍ In verse 21. And there is not a thing but that with us are its depositories. And we do not send it down except according to a known measure. Allah is Hakim. He sends everything with measure. And he has the storage of everything. So nothing runs out in, in the storages of Allah. So our rizq, if he says, you know, you're going to get this much rizq, you're going to get this much rizq. Nobody can prevent it. Nobody can, because Allah preserves it and guarantees it. This is all you're going to get and nobody can prevent it. وَأَرْسَلْنَا الرِّيَاحَ لَوَاقِحَ فَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمُ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهُ بِخَازِنِينَ In verse 22, And we have sent the fertilizing winds and sent down water from the sky and given you drink from it, and you are not its retainers. Rain and water, we cannot, if, if the whole of humanity gets together and tries to simulate rain, they cannot. There are verses in the Quran that says only Allah brings down the rain. That means he brings it down where he wants, in the amount he wants. And Allah, you know, Allah is, these are all provisions. Rain, rain is life. If there is no rain, there is no life. So Allah preserves all of these things and guarantees them. So don't worry. So that's the message that, you know, all these important things are protected and preserved by Allah. Life and death are in Allah's hands. In verse 23. <laughs> and indeed, it is we who give life and cause death, and we are the inheritor. If people threaten you, they cannot hurt you without Allah's permission. And if they do hurt you, it's because Allah willed it. So if you want to be in, pro in, pro in the protection of Allah, be good. And Allah will, pre will preserve you and no harm can come to you. The servants of Allah are protected. In, in verses 39 through 40, it gives the story of, of uh, when Adam was created and Allah ordered the angels to bow down and Iblis refused. And he threatened mankind. And so Allah in, in, in this surah says, 
uh, quoting Iblis, he was saying, قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزَيِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ My Lord, because you have put me in error, I mean, this is the su' al-adab, you know, the, 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 the arrogance of Iblis, that he's accusing Allah for tripping him and making him, you know, disobey him. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even make sense. But, you know, he was, he was threatening humans that he is going to delude us and lead us astray. إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Except the pious servants of Allah because they are in Allah's protection. He cannot touch them. He cannot mislead them as long as they're following the guidance of Allah. So they are protected. And Allah says in verse 42, إِنَّ عِبَادِي لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانٌ إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْغَوِينَ Indeed, my servants, no authority will you have over them except those who follow you of the deviators. So the, if you are following Allah's guidance, the Iblis, the devil, cannot, cannot lead you astray. You are in Allah's protection. If you want to go astray, then Allah will let you go astray. But if you want to be guided, Allah will protect you. So Iblis tries to dazzle and weaken people by making falsehood look impressive and powerful. And, you know, we talked about that last, last week when Allah was giving us the example of haq and batil. Like haq is like, like the froth of water when, you know, you see a lot of froth, but it's useless. Water that sinks into the ground is what is, what is useful, not not the, the, the foam and, and the, you know, the stuff that's on top. That's useless. It looks big, but it's useless. So, you know, the servants of Allah are protected. So Allah's message is everything, you know, for a believer is Allah is, is guaranteeing that he will protect and preserve. So focus on your mission in this life. And that's what he wants us uh, to do. Do not be dazzled or impressed or intimidated or threatened, you know, by, by non-believers or the falsehood, no matter how great, you know, it appears. Don't be impressed with that. Leave it alone. So the, the advice from Allah in verse 88, mm-hmm. Do not extend your eyes towards that by which we have given enjoyment to certain categories of the disbelievers. And do not grieve over them and lower your, and lower your wing to the believers. Matta'a, matta'na, mata'a is, is enjoyment. But the property of it is it's temporary. Ata, you know, the grant, grant is forever. And that's what Allah's reward is. Allah's reward is a grant. But this life, it's mata. You enjoy it for a little bit and then it goes away. It's temporary. Every enjoyment in this life ends by death. That's the property of, of worldly enjoyment. And that is the enjoyment that unbelievers enjoy. There, it's temporary and it's only in this world. And they have infinity to, you know, to be punished for. So that, that no matter how much they have in this, in this life, it's nothing. So leave these unbelievers alone. Let them, you know, let them eat and drink and, and enjoy themselves like animals would before they get taken to the slaughter. So you know, don't worry about them. Do not wish to have what they have. You know, excessive things. It's not, it's not, it's no use. It does not benefit you to have excess of this life. Excess in the hereafter, that's, that's what, what would help. So, you know, and Allah is saying, do not grieve over them. Do not beat yourself up that you're trying to guide these people and they just refuse to. If they refuse to, they refuse to. It's not your job to force people to believe. The, the job of the, of the prophets and all the believers after them is to convey the message and if they want to listen and follow it, they can follow it. If not, do not grieve over them. They will, you know, they will get their punishment like, you know, a murderer who's being taken, you know, to, 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 to be executed. You can feel sorry for them or not feel sorry for them. It's not going to change the outcome. They're going to have to pay for their crime. So do not grieve over them. Leave them. Focus on your job and focus, you know, 
on, on what, what matters. Now, the, the focus and concerns and actions should be towards the believers and their well-being. You know, lowering the wing to the believers means be humble towards other believers. Do not, do not be over them. Be, you know, be a helpful, you know, be helpful for them. Be gentle. Kind of like how we, you would lower your wing to your parents. That, that's a meta, it's a, like a metaphor. So you show, you, you know, you, you show niceness. You know, you're nice to them. You're gentle. You're not, you're not tough. That's how you're, we're supposed to, to act with each other. We're support, we support each other. We love each other. And then we cooperate in all matters of goodness. And then in verse 94, Allah says, فَاصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَأَعْرِدْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Then declare what you are commanded and turn away from the polytheists. That means, that means Allah gave us this message of Islam. Proclaim it, spread it, and forget about you know the people that don't want to believe. Ignore them. Your job is to proclaim it and spread it. So that's you know that's the call from Allah to the believers to spread the message and don't worry about the unbelievers. And protection will be granted to the believers who follow the messengers. And destruction will await the ones who disobey. And then the stories of Prophet, uh, Prophet Lut alayhi salam supports this theme. The story of how his, his people refused to follow him and they were destroyed. Other stories about the destruction of the people of Ad and Thamud when they defied their prophets. So Allah's divine law will be implemented in this world. His sunnah will imp be implemented in this world. And nobody can stop or change them. If you follow Allah, you'll be saved. You'll be preserved and protected. If you don't follow Allah, watch for destruction. That is, that is the sunnah of Allah in this earth, and it's not going to change. Now, the, the, the surah ends in a, in a beautiful, uh, beautiful manner. It ends with the message that Allah knows that the unbelievers... Are, are annoying and hurting the believers. Uh, in verse 97, And we already know that your breast is constrained by what they say. This is for Prophet Muhammad and for all, alayhi salatu wasalam, and for all believers. When you hear this abuse from non-believers, it hurts. It hurts when, when they're attacking Muslims, verbally abusing them, accusing them of, of all kinds of things. You know, it, it hurts. So Allah says, we know. We know what you're going through. So his, re his recipe on how to deal with it, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ So exalt Allah with praise of your Lord and be of those who prostrate to him. That means focus on knowing Allah, obeying him, worshiping him, and be وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ means do a lot of prayers. The Prophet Sallallahu whenever something would concern him, he would go and pray, pray two rak'ahs, and he would, you know, make dua to Allah. I mean, that's how you deal with, with, with difficulties in this life. And the last verse, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until there comes to you the certainty. And certainty is death. That means worship Allah and then, you know, until the la your last breath. Do not be annoyed with the unbelievers. Don't let them get to you. Focus on your mission. Your mission is to convey Islam in the best way. And a lot of it doesn't have to be verbally. Our actions speak louder than words. When we as Muslims act as exemplary human beings, we are making da'wah without opening our mouth. But when we want to go around... And, and give a bad example, that is, you know, that's not helpful. So, you know, these are all trials of this life that a believer must face with faith, patience, and perseverance. And that's the recipe from Allah. Now, the last point I want to mention is, why was it named, uh, the surah was named uh, Al-Hijr, which is the place where Thamud used to live. Um, the story of Thamud, the people of Prophet Saleh, was mentioned in this in the surah, and their dwellings was captured as the name of the surah. So how does that 
or link to the to the hafal, to the preservations of of you know of believers. So verses eighty through eighty four. وَلَقَدْ كَذَّبَ أَصْحَابُ الْحِجْرِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And certainly did the companions of Thamud deny the messengers. Now Allah says messengers. They had one messenger. But to Allah, you defy one, you, you, you defy one messenger, you've defied all of them. And that's why it says, you know, for every, you know, for every prophet, it says they disobeyed the prophets because they all came with the same message you know, from you know, from Allah. If you deny one of them, you deny all of them. وَأَيْتَيْنَاهُمْ آيَاتِنَا فَكَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِ فَكَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِدِينَ And we gave them our signs, but from them they were turning away. They asked for miracles, and Allah gave them the miracles, and they still refused to believe. وَكَانُوا يَنْحِتُونَ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا آمِنِينَ They used to carve from the mountains houses feeling secure. They found a nice mountain where there's no earthquakes, there's no disasters, and they carved their mountains, you know, carved their homes in the side of the mountain, thinking that that's going to preserve them and protect them from, you know, from Allah's punishment and from, you know, from harm. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّيْحَةُ مصبحين. And, but the shriek seized them at early morning. فَمَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ so nothing availed them from what they were used to earn. They were destroyed with a sound wave, with a, cry, with a loud cry, and there is no protection from a loud cry. It goes through, you know, solid rock even more efficiently than goes, it goes through air. So they thought that by carving, you know, they relied on the mountain and worldly things to protect them, and they defied Allah and challenged their messenger, well, bring on the punishment. The punishment of Allah, when it comes, there is no protection from it. If you're hiding in a mountain, the, the loud sound is going to get to you. Your sound, your, your home is preserved, not a crack, but everybody's dead inside. You know, you look at it like, you know, like a, like a nuclear bomb. The radiation will kill, but the, the structures stay. There is no protection except Allah's protection. If you think that your worldly means are going to protect you when you're defying Allah, then watch for destruction because destruction will come because preservation only comes from Allah. And that's why the name of the surah was the dwellings of Thamud. So we have the mental image that there is no protection, no worldly protection except Allah's protection. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وارنا حق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فاتبعونا احسنه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله